Hey guys, it's Mike. Okay, so as I said, I very much appreciate uh, the comments. And let me be clear that if you leave a comment, I assume if you're leaving it in, for the whole world to see, you are open to discussing it. And um, we're creating kind of a community here. And uh, so it gives me an opportunity to go into some subjects which I think are helpful. And so I'm going to do that here. So one of the things I need to say is that, listen, conflict is a necessary part of life. There's nothing wrong with healthy conflict. There's also nothing wrong with uh, uncomfortable feelings. My experience uh, throughout my life is that codependents, uh, if they're you know really regressed in their codependence, uh, they have a difficult time with negative feelings. So, and everybody's different, but let me give an example of somebody that I know. There's a, a person that I know who I would classify as uh, very codependent. Um, and this person, whenever there's within you know, this group that we have, whenever the, there are arguments and arguments get heated, or if somebody gets really angry, you know, in a loving space within a group scenario, this person will shut down. Just completely shuts down and um, so you know we've come to realize that when that happens it means that um, she's really having a strong reaction to the anger that's being uh, expressed now on the surface you might think oh poor little child this poor little baby child can't handle watching the anger we need to calm down but after having investigated and talking actually what ends up coming up is that a lot of anger comes up with her she gets really angry and like she can't control herself angry and um, that has to do with something that happened to her as a kid where her sibling got all the attention when they got angry so it's not about that she can't handle the anger it's that she then feels that she doesn't exist and nobody listens to her and that makes her furious that's just one example of, of, you know, how on the surface it looks a certain way, but underneath there's a whole other thing going on. And that, you know, two people in her group who are having a loving but heated discussion, they have the right to have those feelings and have that discussion and communicate that way. Sometimes that has to happen. Sometimes people yell and scream and they work it out, you know, I mean, you look at your typical, um, you know, uh, stereotypical Italian family. They're yelling and screaming at each other, but they love each other and all that kind of stuff. So if you're on here and you've been in a relationship with a borderline, by definition, you are a codependent. So there's some emotion that's going to be challenging for you. And in my experience, codependents have a hard time with their own anger and they have a hard time with conflict. So I've, I'm saying that because um, there's been some conflict already. This is a new channel and there's already been conflict. There's a, another very uh, well-known um, YouTuber who talks about borderline. I won't mention who it is. You already know who I'm talking about. And there was some conflict there and she made a couple of videos about me and I responded. and. Um, I am totally, totally okay with that. And I do it because, um, number one, I'm not afraid of discussing things. I'm not afraid of confronting things. I'm also not afraid of defending myself against um, bullies. Um, so, you know, something like that happens. It's also, it, it, it's, it's good for YouTube channels. YouTube channels grow when there's conflict and flame wars. And so this is a conscious choice I've made. At no point in time did I ever get um, stimulated and feel insecure and angry and have to defend myself. That has not happened yet. So, but what's interesting is people are responding as though that's what's happening. And that to me is a good opportunity as you know, part of our, this community to reflect back to you Hey, I think that's about you. It's not about me. And this is passive aggressiveness, by the way. Passive aggressive is that way. People become passive aggressive when 
in a lot of uh, scenarios, but one will be is if they become angry. And if they have been programmed or they've been shamed out of having their anger, instead of expressing their anger like you, you're making me mad or you hurt my feelings, instead of being direct about their feelings and owning their feelings, they will find a way to get into the other person and find subtle ways to start controlling them, um, uh, subtly devaluing them. And um, so, you know, uh, just because we're codependents and we're the, quote, victims, you know, codependents can be really nasty. They can be really hard to be around and they can be very destructive. So I'm going to share with you um, a response that that I think falls in line with that. Now, there have been, I've made two videos uh, confronting, you know, and again, not a big way, I'm just responding. You know, there's somebody saying things about me and I go, ooh, here's an opportunity to get to get views for the channel and to discuss things. This is, a, this is what I learned in, in group therapy. If you've never been in group therapy, I strongly suggest it. It's a really great way to be in a safe space and have all of your feelings and to be able to say what you need and learn how to communicate, learn how to own your feelings and learn how your behavior and your responses, you know, how they affect people in ways you couldn't even begin to imagine. So I'm going to treat this like a group therapy session. Uh, so, um, yeah, so I responded a couple different times. And as it turns out, there was a false plant. There was somebody coming in um, responding to my videos, pretending to be an objective observer. As it turns out, it was not. It was somebody masquerading as somebody else and putting in, you know, uh, you know, false propaganda or whatever. I've since blocked that person. Um, and again, I'm not going to get in, I'm not going to get into any names or personalities in this. I'm happy to do it in other times, but not in this video. So this person says, I was responding to my second video. I was responding to my second response to somebody's video about me. And this person says, one person said, uh, can this be the last time we hear about this? Bear in mind, it's only the second time. <laughs> it's not like it's, it's like the fifth time or the tenth time. It's just the second time. And at no point did I ever get bent out of shape. At no point did I ever lose my cool or, or, or get aggressive or attack anybody. None of that ever happened. But the response was as if these were like this knockdown, you know, drag out fight that's been going on forever. And oh my God, can we just please stop with the drama? That's coming from you. And so somebody said, can this please be the last time? And I said, yes. You have this thing called power of choice that you can choose which videos you want to watch and which you don't. And if that person's name is in the title, you know not to watch that because you don't want to see it. You can click on the channels you like and not click on the ones you don't like. It's a really great thing. But it's interesting how people want to try and control me. You know, like it's my fault. Like they can't control themselves because I've made a video that might push their buttons about something. Well, get used to it. I'm going to push your buttons. I'm going to do it on purpose. I'm not going to, you know, purposefully try and upset you. But as I said, if you're passive aggressive, if you're in denial, I'm going to tell you. And I believe that's where the growth is. And if you don't want that, I'm okay with that. There's no shortage of channels on YouTube you can go watch. But I want to treat you the way I would want to be treated, which is I want people to be honest and reflect back to me. As many people on uh, YouTube do when they're leaving comments. They wouldn't say it to my face, but they'll leave comments. And so they feel, anyway. So in any case, this one, this person says, in response to my second response video to that person who shall stay nameless, all seems very childish to me, exclamation point. He said this, she said that, life's too short for all this BS. Choose happy and both grow up. You know, I don't know what chaos you think has happened because I haven't gotten upset at all. I haven't gotten, yeah, you haven't seen me get upset. I haven't got upset at all. So I respond and I said, it's okay for people to have conflict. 
If it makes you uncomfortable, focus on the anger within you that comes up. Because there's a, you know, if I look at the text, exclamation point, life is too short for this BS. You know, you're having a strong reaction to seemingly innocuous couple of interchanges. Um, choose happy. In other words, stop having your negative feelings. So this is classic codependence. You know, when a, when a codependent comes and tells you to not have your feelings, they come at you sometimes very nicely. They'll have, I don't know this, I can't tell from the reading what the thought process or what the vibe would have been if I were in person. I would have a better idea how this person would come across. I don't know. But a lot of times a codependent will come and say, you know, let's not focus on that negativity. Let's focus on positivity. And, you know, what they're really saying is, Shut the hell up. You're making me uncomfortable. I don't want to feel my anger. Your anger is making me angry. Now, sometimes that's unconscious. So consciously, they think they're full of love. But on an unconscious level, they're full of rage. And somebody's anger is stimulating their anger. And since they've been shamed into not being allowed to have their feelings, then they seek to calm the person down, which is a way of simply invalidating their feelings and telling them not to have your feelings in front of me. I don't like it. So I'm like that. Whenever a codependent tries to do that to me, I get angry. And I say, don't tell me how to have my feelings. Don't tell me what to feel and not feel. I don't like you invalidating my feelings. It's very, it feels very aggressive and it feels very controlling and I don't like it. Now, so that's what I see here in this. So that's why I said, Again, I'm not upset when I write this and I say, it's okay for people to have conflict. If it makes you uncomfortable, focus on the anger within you that comes up. It's important to be able to tolerate conflict. To which the person describes, wow, maybe you're right. I do have a lot of anger within me at the moment. Definitely something I need to work on. I got to tell you, that sounds like, a, like somebody just trying to pacify me and pretend, you know, what they call that compliance, I think, in therapeutic terms. That sounds like somebody's being compliant. They're trying to tell me what they think I want to hear. Because then what the person says after that pretty much, you know, invalidates that whole, oh, I think I'll look at myself. I just think maybe you'd be better. So now it's, she's going to, I don't know if it's a he or she, this person's going to turn it on me and now it, they're going to give me unsolicited advice. Uh, I think you'd be better letting the viewers decide themselves if you're a trustworthy guy. I don't care if you think I'm trustworthy. I honestly don't care. Um, I thought I made that clear. I, I'm, I know who I am. I don't need to have you validate or invalidate whether or not I'm trustworthy. I brought it up because I thought it was interesting. And it's again, it's good for the channel. It's good for the discussion. And um, that was part of what I wanted to say. I'm not afraid of any of it, but I don't care if you think I'm trustworthy or not. You're free to make that decision. There's numerous channels to go watch. This person isn't threatening to leave the channel, but um, the viewers are going to decide for themselves if I'm trustworthy. That's already going to happen. So. Uh, this person says, I think you'd maybe be better just letting the viewers decide themselves if you're a trustworthy guy, which I believe you are. Thank you. It all seems very similar to somebody trying to defend themselves against a smear campaign, which most therapists, so now this person is trying to use therapy against me. This is a very manipulative way. I mean, person who left this, this is a very passive aggressive, codependent, very manipulative way. It's very controlling. You may not be aware of that, but there's a lot of just classic codependent. I don't want to feel my feelings, so I'm going to reflect and project and deflect onto you. And then I'm going to try and use authority, like throw out words like therapy, what a therapist would tell you. And it's really quite controlling instead of just saying you don't like it, in which case I can say it's OK with me that you don't like it. You don't have to watch it. And I don't mean that in any negative way. You have the you have the choice. But to try and control what videos I make and what videos I don't is very controlling and very passive aggressive. Um, I, I just think you'd be better letting the viewers decide themselves, meaning them. I think you'd be better off letting me decide what videos you should put up and what you shouldn't. 
You should listen to what I like and what I don't like, and you should do me. You should let the viewers tell you. So let the viewers decide themselves if you're a trustworthy guy, which I believe you are. It all seems very similar to somebody trying to defend themselves against a smear campaign, which most therapists would advise against as it only makes you look like the crazy one. I don't care if I look crazy. I swear to you I don't care. If you watch my other channel, you will find out I could care less if I look crazy or not. Um, if people decide not to watch your channel and think that you're not trustworthy, then that's their loss. T-H-E-R-E, -E, not T-H-E-I-R. Then that's their loss, and you wouldn't want to be associated with them anyway. By the way, your videos on BDP have been very formative and helpful. Thank you. I appreciate that. Best wishes for the future. Thank you. Um, so, look, uh, I made myself clear. It's like, look, this is your deal. If... If this really like conflict, which is not a big deal, I mean, I'm not, I'm not upset. When I'm upset, you'll know it. I'm not upset. If this very light two video back and forth has got you feeling like it's just this crazy drama chaos, so much so that you need to find these passive aggressive ways to, you know, therapize me, this means that conflict really bothers you. And that's okay. But own it. I want, I, you know, if you're, in my experience, to to recover from uh, from codependence, the anger and the control has to be addressed because that is what's been going on. I've been sharing a lot in my, you know, my personal experiences with this my borderline ex, who I was honestly very helpful and wanted to help, but there was also a desire for control. And so whenever we're trying to, you know, if you're a border, I mean, excuse me, if you're a codependent and you're trying to fix somebody, it's not coming from love. It's coming from they're making you uncomfortable. You're trying to silence your own pain. Like when I get teary eyed, this is why I picked this, you know, the, the picture of this, of this crying, oh, right there. She's right there. <laughs> the reason why I picked that as the, picture for the channel and why I keep putting it up is because it just slays me. It just, I mean, every fiber in my being wants to pick that little baby girl up and make her feel better. And I do that to remind myself of my codependence because that's what I was doing with this woman that clearly made it clear, you know, a week into the relationship that she was not uh, somebody who was capable of loving me in the way that I wanted. And I still kept on chasing after the pain that I kept seeing, trying to fix it, trying to fix my own pain. And that's controlling. You're trying to control somebody else because you're not really loving them for who you are, for who they are. If you're in a relationship with a borderline, again, you get there however you get there, and hindsight is 2020 and all of that. So I'm not blaming anybody for where they're at, but. If you get there, it's because the pain you see in them is the pain you're trying to squelch within yourself. And uh, so when you see this conflict and you think, oh my God, can we stop with the conflict already? It's such BS. You, my God, the drama coming out of you trying to stop me from just simply saying to somebody, no, blah, 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 blah. I'm okay. I, Again, think about it. Go back in any of those videos and find a place where you see me getting really upset or really defensive. Find a spot. I don't think there is one because I'm not, I honestly don't care. I don't care if this channel fails or if it succeeds. I want it to succeed. It looks like it's going to succeed, which is why I'm putting so much effort into it. But if it doesn't tomorrow, like right now, I don't care if you come back to the channel. If you think that I'm going to cause problems and I'm going to be, um, if I'm going to be, you know, get into conflict and if that's going to be too much BS for you, in all seriousness, I'm totally okay if you don't come back. I'm going to do what I want to do because I want to experience my channel and heal and grow and I'm going to do what I think is beneficial for me for my channel and for my viewers. And I think it's beneficial for my viewers to 
understand that life is conflict. And I, at one, I think I showed how somebody can respond because I've since looked into that issue a little deeper and have come to the, to the realization that that was just the tip of the iceberg that that individual actually has been gunning for me for weeks now and been saying all kinds of horrible things about me, you know, um, which of course I, I can't, I don't know for a fact, but there's enough evidence to convince me that that's the case. And I'm totally okay with it. Thank you, keep, keep promoting me. But yeah, if somebody comes on and I mean, I, I've got no problem saying here I am. I think I responded very professionally. I took the high road. I said nothing but complimentary things to the other person. I, um, I go back. I mean, I praised them and I defended them. So I don't know what you're talking about. This is coming from you. When when conflict happens and you start and you want to shut it down because it's too much for you, this means that this is how you respond. That you're angry that other people's anger stimulate your anger and you can't tolerate your own anger so you shame it down but you do that by projecting it. You shame other people out of their anger and you do it in manipulative ways like you know feel better or you know what a therapist would say or this is making you look bad or who cares what anybody thinks. Those are all manipulative control methods because you're angry and it's okay. You can be angry on my channel. Can have those feelings with me when I'm in a relationship, like uh, with a you know with a with a romantic partner. And as you know, conflict arises and things happen, if she can come to me and look me in the eyes, with owning all of her feelings and say, you know what, I'm really angry with you. I'm furious at you. I'm murderously rageful at you right now. And if they can tell me why, what it was that I did or said, if they can own it even if it's accurate or inaccurate, even if it's completely coming from them, I will hug that person and love them and I will kiss them and I will say thank you for sharing your feelings with me because that lets me know that when there are problems, they're not going to be passive aggressive, they're not going to hold it in, they're not going to act out unconsciously, they're going to come to me with their feelings and I'll be able to work through it. So I'm just reflecting that back to you. Um, and now I'm going to, as I said, this is my channel. I'm going to do whatever the hell I want. And I, won't, and I hope you're okay with that. I will make whatever videos I want. And you telling me not to make a certain kind of video is actually going to make me start thinking. Maybe I should start making more of those videos. So you have the right to watch whatever you want. You have the right to like whatever you want or don't want. You have the right to, to you have all kinds of power of choice here. Okay, you coming onto my channel is your choice. How and to what degree you interact with me and my videos is your choice. Okay, so I hope you stay and I, I hope that that was helpful. Maybe, maybe it wasn't, but anyway, for people watching, I hope it's helpful. All right, so that's it. And let me give you the three before I go. I, I keep wanting to say this. I want to make this every part uh, a regular part in all the videos. For me, the recovery from codependence, um, this is true in all, but especially in the case of having been, or if you're in uh, a relationship with an untreated borderline, it's a three-pronged attack. First one is therapy. You gotta go get qualified therapy. Second is get into a 12-step group. Codependence Anonymous is one I recommend. Al-Anon will work. Um, adult Children of Alcoholics will also work. There may be others out there. Working those steps. It's not about the people. The people are people and it's not about the religion. It's not about the God thing. It's about working the 12 steps and looking at your participation in your misery. The third prong is having some kind of spiritual practice. Meditation, church, uh, Tai Chi, yoga. I don't care some kind of uh, uh, spiritual practice that connects you to something that you respect. I don't care if it's God or if it's the ocean. Just as long as it's something more powerful than you. Those three things are key. 
That's what's gotten me where I am. If you want to know how I got where I am, that's what did it. Just every single day hammering away at one or all three of those every single day. Um, codependents like borderline personality disorder only gets worse with time. It will not go away on its own and you will only become more entrenched in my experience. So I have to attack it and I have to attack it as a warrior with everything that I have. Therapy, 12 steps and a spiritual practice. Okay. All right. That's it. And hey, crying little girl right there. She's crying because you haven't subscribed yet. So lightly, just take your mouse and lightly go over her little face and then click subscribe and then she will stop crying and she will be happy. All right, that's it. Talk to you guys later.